Oh, you're, hey, you're, bet, you're hitting that hammer. Don't yell at me. You hear me? <laughs> yeah, well, you knock that thing over and Scott will be over here hollering at you. Uh, you may want to end up repositioning that a little bit, too. The hammer? Yeah. Progress on the coralline. Um, you see, Connie's still working away. He's been here for the last week straight. No, just kidding. Uh, no, he's making progress in short of a, a little over an hour's worth of time on the tank. I hope not. He's asked. I hope not. It's hard to tell, but I don't think so. I think you're doing fine. Well, what do you got there? These are sanding pads. Um, got this stuff called micro mesh, which is a wet type sandpaper. It came in larger sheets, but it's sandpaper is bonded to like a vinyl cloth, um, and they came in 12 by 4 inch sheets, uh, which just happens or 12 by 6 inch rather, um, just happens to be the right side it's for my pads. And these are the pads I use for my magnet. And what I did was take the sandpaper and add some silicone to the back and glue them to the pads. Um, these are the scraps. Oh, how cute. A little family of sandpaper filter pads. Yeah, basically made up a couple sets that start at 1,500. I got 15, 18, 2,400, 3,200, 3,600, 4,000, 6,000, 8,000, and finally 12,000, which is really kind of for the polishing stage. It's and like trying to sand with paper. Yeah. <laughs> so the ideal be is that uh, once Condi's finished and when I get the courage up in the next several days, um, I'll go in there in the areas where there's scratching along the bottom and um, try to remove some of that scratching and polish it out while there's water in the tank. Uh, about 12 years ago or so we had Condi here, we actually drained the tank and um, he was inside the tank polishing it out, um, buffers, sanders, you name it, and basically made the tank new and redid the aquascape. That was about 12 years ago the last time we broke the tank down and I have no plans on doing that again if all uh, if that can be avoided, that of course, unless I'm moving to Montana, which hopefully is in my future, but that'll be a story for another episode. Um, needless to say, so that's the plan. Um, Jim pointed out too that this is awfully wide, so I might make another set of pads where the uh, sandpaper just runs down, you know, along one edge of it or something, so that I can work a smaller area. But that's the plan. Um, sanding the scratches out with micro mesh at some point in the very near future. Uh, not that there's an awful lot of scratches, but finally there are And, and how, is, how is he coming along over here? He's making great progress. <laughs> We're about two-thirds of the way done, actually. A little more than that. Oh. And tell us again what he's doing. He is using the glass metal scraper on my acrylic tank and doing so without scratching it, knock wood. Making very good progress, I might add. I hear him clamoring around up above. Let's see here. Hey, get back in there. You can't come out. I'm trying to find myself a sleeping spot. <laughs> oh, you got your sleeping bag over there in the far corner. <laughs> what are you doing? Paying in the water. <laughs> well, that's what all us fish guys do. Paying the water. Ask him if I scratching anything. He asked if you're. Uh, he asked if he if he's scratching anything. Uh, yeah, he is scratching the coralline now. He said, yes, you're scratching coralline algae. Okay. Am I doing any progress or am I just playing? Uh, from what I saw, you were doing progress. Very good progress, Connie. I'll walk I'm going to walk over and see this side. This is the hardest side. Are you on the top? Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm just waiting for you to start working on the bottom. That'll be the hardest. I'll go take a look. Keep working towards the backyard right there, Condi. 
go back towards the uh, garage. Well, yeah, just keep working it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So you can see that he's done. Uh, He's done quite a good job on the front side of the tank. There's uh, basically one little area left um, that he'll nick off here in a, a moment, but uh, the rest of the top is uh, quite uh, clean now. Down here on the bottom, this will become the, the real challenge here. This is the thick stuff. That area there, you just put your thumb on, comes down a little ways. Not a good angle. There, oh, yep, yeah, that spot there. Oh, yeah, pretty much just got it all. Got it all? Pretty much, yeah. Anything that's there is really almost below the water line, but it's below the drywall line. Am I missing nothing else? Uh, I need to go see if what I'm seeing is scratches or if there's just a slight layer of coral you know. That uh, top edge looks real good. Okay, so now we're just working on the bottom? Yeah, it'll be the bottom. I am going to need them to, have to shut these jets up up top down so I can see the ones that are up right. top moving water. Right, right. They've got to get shut down. Too much surface agitation and I you can't, can't see into the water. I can't see. You need as mirror uh, finish as possible, huh? Yeah. Well, let's see what we can do about that. In the olden days, I would have just knelt down alongside the cabinet, opened the door, located the plug, and pulled the power right. on the appropriate water pump. Okay, it turns off. With Scott's high-tech tank, it's now just a matter of logging in and pushing a few buttons on his laptop screen. And it's so high tech that it informs him if something goes out of its normal parameters. Oh yeah, I'm gonna get paged any second. My sump level is high. Because a monitor on your uh, float, apex float is gonna switches, yeah. page you and tell you that something's too low. And uh, so in turning off that return pump to eliminate the uh, surface movement, it, uh, a little bit of back siphon fills up down in the sump. Well, the water level that's above the overflow level will go down into the sump. And a monitor down in the sump is going to... Float switches. ...let you know. Yeah, here. See right here that when there's another set of float switches on this side here that when the level gets up to a certain point, it shuts off the skimmer, um, sends me an email or alarm alert. These other float switches here are for my ATO. I have them attached to magnet cleaners so that they're easily mounted and I can adjust them as I need to. But yeah, it's connected to my apex, to my breakout box, and when those floats are tripped, the ATO floats will turn my ATO pump on and off. Uh, when the high level float is tripped, shuts the skimmer off, sends me an email alert. Um, there's also a low-level float switch in there that tells me my sump is too low and it'll send me an alert as well. Um, that'll also shut off my water changer in case it's something to do with the water change pump or something else. Pumps just get shut off automatically depending on the situation. Well, he certainly made a big dent in the bottom now from that point onwards and uh, <coughs> now we're into the really deep difficult stuff normally in an extreme case would you consider using that um, metal blade and this is kind of an extreme case it doesn't seem to be Scratching. Just have to get some coral in there, 
Push it up. It's probably so thick it's starting to sprout corals. Gosh, if you look in here, you can see how my reef has actually grown inches in places. It's plated over so much. But what are we looking at? We're looking at 12 years worth of coralline growth uh -huh. in the rocks. Not so much the acrylic, but... Well, could be. been exposed to it that long anyhow. Maybe that's 12 years worth of crummy aquarium service. You know, I'll have to talk to my service guy. I'd have a serious conversation with him. Yeah, no kidding. Because you'd never let it get like that. Nah. No, actually, it's more my fault. Now that we got those good algae scraper blades um, for my magnet cleaner, it'll be a lot easier to stay on top of that. That's the key is to stay on top of it. I had Condi sanded out my 215 twice, I believe, because the coralline got out of control on it. He's so widely known in the aquarium industry that newly caught fish ask to be bought by him. He set up aquariums for customers 20 years ago. Those same customers still ask for him by name. He doesn't feed the fish. They bring the ocean's bounty to him. He is only second in line when it comes to making purified water. The guy ahead of him is in the Bible. He is the most interesting fish guy in the world. I don't always make DI water, but when I do, I prefer Spectra Pure. Stay pure, my friends. Receive a $50 LA Fish Guys discount on a Spectra Pure Max Cap 90 five stage RODI water purification system. Just call or go online to SpectraPure.com and mention or enter LA Fish Guys coupon code LAFMAX50 to receive your LA Fish Guys $50 discount. Hi, I'm Mark from Mark's Tropical Fish here in Studio City, California. Here at Mark's Tropical Fish, we specialize in all aspects of the hobby. Whether you have a coral reef, a saltwater aquarium, freshwater aquarium, or a koi pond. We can help you in all those areas, including servicing for home and office. Here we are in front of my location at 12063 Ventura Place in Studio City, right near the intersection of Ventura Boulevard and Laurel Canyon. We are located right off the 101 freeway at the Laurel Canyon exit in close accessibility to all the, the cities in the valley and the LA basin. Uh, we're open Monday through Friday uh, from 10 a.m. till 7, Saturday 11 a.m. till 6, and Sunday 11 a.m. till 5. We also have rear parking in case the metered parking is taken up on the street. Hope to see you soon. Do you have an aquarium question? Are you looking for aquatic answers? Just key in wetwebmedia.com. Wet Web Media has information on freshwater, marine, brackish, and planted aquariums. Wet Web Media is staffed by the capable Wet Web Media crew. Check today's facts, ask questions, or search keywords. That's wetwebmedia.com. So how's that coming along? Seems like, uh, I don't know. It's looking pretty good on the other side. Okay. I think he did say something about moving up a little bit earlier. I don't know if you heard that. I don't know it's why. hard to hear inside here. In fact, that's probably one of the most frustrating things is trying to interpret what the person is saying along with even hearing what they're trying to say. Tell him, Andy, I'll yes. guide you ooh, into ooh, the area. Kick with your the ass magnet. now. All right? I'll what? guide I'll guide ooh, you with fight, the magnet. Fight, fight, fight. If you feel <laughs> if you feel the magnet pushing on one side of the thing, that means go a little bit to the other side. Go away from the magnet, okay? So I'll guide you to the areas with the magnet on one side of your blade or the other, pushing you this way or that way. Um, well, I don't want you... You can't tell Jim for me to go garage. I can hear you go telling me to go to garage or, or okay. so forth. But I'm just... There? Right there? He said, yeah. Towards the backyard. Up or down? Up or down. Right in that area there. Up and down. 
towards the backyard. You put your left foot in, you put your left foot out, you take your left foot in, and you shake it all about. <laughs> Bad angle. Huh? Huh? Bad angle. Bad angle. Bad angle. I feel like I'm in a submarine. <laughs> I'm a mariner. Bing, bing, bing. Time for a new blade. Yes, sir. Uh, time for a stretch. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. How's the suntan? I don't know. I when I check in the mirror, I look at my ass. You mean <laughs> at my at my tail? You mean I'll be able to tell? You know. My girl, my wife's probably gonna think that I was at the beach. <laughs> You've been fishing. Mm -hmm. That's right, honey. I've been playing with the fish. Playing in the water. Splishing and a splashing. See what we're doing here is we're sharpening the blade to make sure that, that it's like almost like a like razor, a, like a razor, but at an angle. We're not sanding it upwards, straight. You know what I mean? To where it, where it takes away from the sharpness from the point. So you're uh, about two thirds to three quarters of the way through on the bottom. Okay, where do you want me to go towards that? Because I see uh, some algae right here. You're basically looking at you know a foot on either side of the uh, overflow, if that. So basically straight down from where your hand is, and then towards the garage area. I'm on the bottom edge there. That's the worst of it. Okay, towards the backyard now. There you go. Right in that area there. That's where it's all at. And we're down to the home stretch. There's a patch, oh, maybe six inches long there that um, is all that's left. Okay, towards the backyard and the... Mr. Hawk fishes over to check out things. All the way down. You just got one patch left. But, uh, certainly has knocked out the uh, entire bottom and top, making the entire tank look taller. We're down to the last couple of little tiny right patches. There, yeah. You're on it. And of course, it's the hardest point to reach because he's not only lying on top of there, but he's reaching between the you two openings. Oh boy. I think it's a, a right, done right, thing. I think you're pretty much done. Why don't you come out and take a break and see what you did? You know, besides the tank uh, view literally being taller, uh, it already, with clean edges and clean straight lines, is really much, much more uh, attractive, I, I have to say it. And um, it's sad. It kind of emanates a little bit from me. All my tanks in the past, the Coraline usually gets out of control. So I guess my take-home message would be is uh, if you're going to be doing the coral reef tank and uh, you've got a, a lack of Coraline cleaning ability, select a glass tank, not an acrylic tank. Not that the Coraline won't grow in the glass as well as the acrylic, but it's a whole lot easier to clean off the glass than it is the acrylic. Yeah. But... One thing about an acrylic tank is if you get a scratch in it, you can always drain it and polish it out with a glass tank. You can't. Yep. And keep in mind, this tank is over 20 years old now. I had it made 20 years ago. It's held up pretty damn good. Um, in California, where we have earthquakes and stuff like that, I'd be kind of sketched out with a glass tank, whereas this is one thing that I know my house may fall, but the tank will still be standing. Maybe not the plumbing, but... Hmm. Got everything over there. The only thing that's really left that I can see is on the top edge on the this side here. What's that? Where? Right here, in the middle area. Where? In the middle area? Yeah, just the top edge over here. Are you swimming? A little bit. Feels like it. 
Here, you can guide them from home while I order pizza. Where am I going? And what do you want on yours? Pepper, just pepperoni would be fine. Yeah. Where am I going to knock out? Yeah. Where am I going to knock out you off? Right here in the front? Pizza, everybody. Uh, no, pizza. I'm just thinking here. In, huh? in the office side. Where, this side? Office over here. This, this side? is the office. On this top oh. edge, yeah. Get your act together up there, buddy. There's, you know, basically from here where my finger is, well, pretty much this whole area down to about, you know, the, the little past the middle of the tank. Okay, you guide them for a minute, Tim, and I'm going to order it. Oh, yeah, I see. Turn the tank on for that. Uh, hold on, though. Let me get the bottom of this, uh, of the front over here. Yeah. Well, I still got out. I still got some over there, you know? Where? In those corners over there. That ain't you for... Well, you've got this front corner here towards the garage. Yeah, that I gotta get. Yeah. Hurry up, damn it. Tell me, man. Just drop me back off at Home Depot. Yeah, right there. Yeah, right there. Is he ordering pizza? Yeah, order for delivery. Uh, extra large. Oh yeah. Uh, hang on. Condi, do you like onion at all or no? No. Hang on, I'm not asking you. No. Pizza. Yeah. It's all right. Okay, I just didn't know if I should just order all. I like pepperoni and onion. Okay, tell you what, make it extra large. Make it three quarters pepperoni and then one quarter pepperoni and onion. Can you do that? Yeah, just. Yeah. Put the damn onions on the side. You can sprinkle them yourself. Because you're such a <laughs> anti-veggie. I was gonna call you a picky. Uh, yeah, we'll go on that line, but with a <laughs> y. Nine zero two zero. Yep, nine zero two zero. At delivery. One zero one four. One zero one four. Oh, pizza, pizza, pizza. Pizza, pizza, pizza. Pizza time. <laughs> four, four, six, zero. Two, four, eight. And it's this tank. And for that same reason that I started wearing my hair in a ponytail, it would all be dangling inside the water, getting all wet. It looks like nice. you fly fishing. Wow. <laughs> looks like a whole new tank. It, it does, is a it? whole new tank. Yeah, look at the other side. That's even more impressive because there's really nothing left there. Do you need uh, him to turn the water back on? Yeah, I told him to turn it that way. I could do this side because I don't want to scratch it, dry, dry uh, scrub it on this side without the, without the water being there. That's the only side that we basically got to really hit. And so as Condi changes into his scuba suit as he prepares to go inside the tank, we're going to take a short break. That's a break for pizza. Be sure to come on back for part three 